Wow, so that was a lot of fun. You can't say that you didn't come to Summer Institute and have a lot of fun, I tell you what. You never know what's going to happen. When teachers and folks step up to that video camera, you don't know what's going to come out. But i, I got to harken back for a minute to the teacher videos that we saw before that, that fun rap, uh, which was awesome. Uh, thinking about, I don't know about you, but just watching those videos and seeing the energy and the passion from those teachers just literally gives me goosebumps, no doubt about it. Uh, and Micah's comment, Micah Braswell's comment about wanting his students to teach him while he's teaching them, that is so powerful. So thank you for all you do. As Scott Rawls mentioned yesterday, uh, you are the tipping point for so many students across the state. Uh, and you mean so much to all of them. So I'm Lynn Garrison, and I lead Strategic Partnerships and Engagement for the North Carolina New Schools Project. It's great to be here. I'm going to start, as we all have, with our personal journey uh, that, that brought us to this day. So I am from a family of educators. In fact, I am a PK. PK. So now in religious cir uh, circles, PK tends to mean Preacher's kid, right? Well, in educator's circles, PK means principal's kid. So when I was in elementary school, my grandmother was my principal. Uh, and she instilled so many values uh, in me that, that I, I still strive to uphold. But she, I really, uh, she was a great mentor. And it was pretty interesting having the principal of the school be your grandmother. My mother was a high school teacher in an inner city school, uh, and she would come home at night and tell me stories about the young black men that would um, come into her class on a regular basis, even though she was the home ec teacher in the high school. These young black men gravitated to my mom because she, she was their ear, she was their shoulder. She, whether it was lending them or giving them lunch money or money for supplies or just listening to them or giving them some support. She was there for them and helped shepherd them through those, through those years. Uh, and I will never forget those stories. She earned her master's degree and her doctorate degree at night while she was working. And that, of course, was at a time when well, that didn't happen very often. So she, she was just a great role model for me. Um, my father, by contrast, uh, also a phenomenal role model, but he didn't have the same opportunity to go to college as my mom did. Um, I uh, have always been an avid reader. Uh, that's always been a deep love of mine. Uh, not so much for my dad and my brother and my youngest son. Reading has always been a challenge for them. So I definitely understand, and, and the words all means all really resonates with me. Uh, as a result of my upbringing, I've been involved in education throughout my career. Uh, I may not be a school teacher, but I have looked for ways to be involved all the way through, whether it was during my years in the Jim Hunt administration, great education governor, I had lots of opportunities to work in education during those years, and then at the Wake County school system, and then ultimately at Blue Cross and Blue Shield in the private sector, I found a way to make sure that my community involvement time revolved around education. And then I came here to North Carolina New Schools Project 18 months ago, and I felt like I had come home to my education roots, and it's been great ever since. So thank you for the chance to be here. My role today is to bring you an update on the North Carolina New Schools Project. Now, you may feel that you've been here, uh, you've been here all week, so you don't really need an update on the North Carolina New Schools Project, so I'm gonna keep it very brief. Uh, as you know, the North Carolina New Schools Project is a catalyst for change. Collaboration literally is at the heart of everything we do. Collaborating with partner schools across the state, just like you folks here in this room, uh, as well as government, business, and higher education partners. In fact, we work with more than 350 partners across the state and nation to support innovation in secondary education. There's three key strategies at the core of our approach. First, teaching, learning, and leading. We strive every day to inspire and support teachers and administrators, you folks here in this room, to embrace new approaches to teaching and learning. Secondly, models for innovation. We advance a wide range of approaches, 
to secondary school structure and organization based on well-articulated, tested design principles. Uh, models like regional schools, early colleges, STEM schools, theme-based schools, career academies, and large middle and high schools. And third, talent development. Through school-based coaching and professional development like that that you've experienced this week, we help develop the knowledge, skills, attitudes, and beliefs of those of you who make this work happen every day in the classroom and in the school. And we work to build effective partnerships with business and industry and with higher education to help you bring relevance to teaching and learning and prepare all students for college and work-ready standards. Now, your work sometimes may seem a bit isolated in a community or within a school system. The day-to-day -day support for your approach at the state level can often be unseen. We're committed to do all we can to protect the funding and to ensure that state leaders provide the policies and the waivers so that no barrier, real or imagined, stands in your way of success. We'll be emphasizing in the coming year and in the years to come case studies uh, that showcase the success that you're seeing in your schools, videos and other tools so that the General Assembly, the State Board of Education, leaders in universities, community colleges and businesses around the state recognize and value the type of education that you're committed to providing for each and every student. So let's take a moment, and I know the slides are already up on the screen, let's take a moment and look at what you have achieved, and I emphasize you. It's important to note that you're making a concerted effort to demonstrate what's required to succeed with high-need students, and through the voices of Amelia, Isaac, Shamari today, and others, we've seen in person the very real impact you have across the state. Well, let's look at some graphics and some numbers and see that as well. So in this slide that you have up, you see that 37 of our partner schools in every corner of the state had zero dropouts last year. I'd, I'd call that every student. Every student being successful. Now here you see that our partner schools have a four-year graduation rate of nearly 86 percent. Now that's compared to nearly 78 percent for North Carolina public schools in general. And then look at the next one. For black males, that four-year graduation rate is 80 percent. Think about that. 80 percent compared to just 64 percent across the state. Then in early colleges across the state, nearly half 46% of graduates are earning associate degrees or two years of college credit. Give yourselves a hand for that amazing, solid progress. And we thank you for the energy and the dedication that you offer each and every day to see that every student graduates, every student graduates ready for college careers and life. Now, we all know that effective leadership is key to innovation and to sustaining this progress. So I'm pleased now to recognize and turn the mic over to my colleague, Jody Anderson, who leads our North Carolina Center for Educational Leadership. Jody. <laughs> 